burnt sienna. Sorry, tiny bit of fallow blue. And that will give us that lovely contrasting green. So let's continue and use slightly bluer greens. There's quite a cool, lots of cool greens in here. Be careful that you don't lose all your lovely uh, sandy brown colours. If you want to be really pedantic, you can get your masking fluid out and protect them. But if you're happy to wing it a little bit as it's still a sketch in your sketchbook, then just go along um, and be mindful where you've put your lights so you don't lose them totally. It's easy to get carried away with your paint. So I'm just using this one big brush to get the main colours down, very loose, very fast. And we can build more colours, more layers as we go. Then we've got um, some sponging. So if we want, we could put in some of the leaves at the background. So burnt, see, sorry, sap green, fallow blue, gives us a nice mid blue. And then we can bounce with a nice medium sized sponge, the lovely leaves in the background. You can also use this within your painting on some of the foliage because it adds a bit of texture, another dimension. So now we want to consolidate our greens, make them a little bit stronger. So sap green, fallow blue and alizarin crimson will give you a lovely dark green. Racing car green. And we're just going to keep adding. I'm going to change brush sizes now, go down one size so as we can have a little bit more detail. I've got a really dark green here, which I'm going to use just at the bottom of the twigs, which will bleed into the other green. Remember, keep your lights if you can. If you remember, don't cover them all up. Some very dark green in here. Often people just paint brown because they know trees are brown but actually they're often green covered in moss. They've got lots of colours in them. I've added a bit of burnt sienna there to the green. It'll bleed very wet. So a lot of these greens are very blue. So remember that. All your ivy is very blue. You can put in some nice blue effects. So we've added fallow blue into the mix there and we're just piling it on in layers not worrying too much about the absolute detail. I'm going to use very dark green here and paint upwards painting into the negative adding weight to the bottom of the picture like we did before in our little sketch I'm thinking about where the little dark splodges are that gives us um, some depth to our painting, gives us the little layers, so perhaps where we can see a bit of the bank beyond the foliage. And we can pop in, in around these little leaves here. I think I've lost my violet, but let's try and get that back. So a little bit of dioxin violet, putting in our flowers in here, just a little tiny bit indicating that something's going on, it's quite interesting. So remember the flow and the energy and the movement that we drew right at the beginning. So try and capture that in the movement of the marks that you're making with your brush. But keep the paint very wet. Allow it to run into each other, get lovely effects. So over here we've got quite a lot of ivy. It's very blue. 
So we can dominate with phthalo blue in our green here. Even our very, very darkest green, which was made with sap green, phthalo blue and alizarin. Very little water. 